Well, hello there, my dear friends, and welcome back to the Scott Reed Project. And today, we're gonna to be making some burgers. What I have here then is some venison. If you cannot get venison, by all means, substitute it for beef. Right, what I have in my bowl then, this is all my venison trim. When I butcher a deer, we get quite a bit of trim from in between the bones. When we're boning out the deer, we get all the trim, the off cuts, and when we're squaring up joints, all that, all goes into this pile, which we can make burgers with, or sausages. So there you have it then, my pile of venison trim. First thing I'm gonna do is get it through the mincer. My wonderful venison, courtesy of my main man Coops again, has gone through the mincer once. What I want to do then is put it through a second time. So there we have it then, our minced or ground venison. By all means, go out and just buy some minced uh, beef or minced venison. What I am going to be using is 500 grams, so I'm just going to weigh some out on here. So as we all know then, there is a gazillion recipes on YouTube, on the internet, for homemade burgers. But what I want to do, I want to keep it really, really simple and concentrate on the flavour of the meat. So what I have here then, like I said, 500 grams. Now all I'm going to add is five grams of pepper. That is a gram for every 100 grams. And then here I've got some beautiful sea salt. I'm adding two grams for every 100 gram of meat. So there is 10 grams. So 500 grams of meat, five grams of pepper, 10 grams of salt and that is pretty much our mix so we're going to give it a mix up now i watched something really interesting the other day it was a, one of those you know five minute clips i think by tasty or something they had all these michelin starred chefs really pretentious about the ultimate burger oh man it has to be made with wagyu it has to be this it has to be that it has to have that in but the best thing was at the end eric repair of le bernardin that's always in the top 50 restaurants in the world, said the kings of making burgers are McDonald's. Now that blew me away coming from a culinary heavyweight like him, but then I thought about it as he went on and I thought he's right. And he was saying the reason their burgers are so good is the ratio. And if you think about it, it is. You may not or you may agree with what he says, but you can't deny that they've got it down pat. You know that lovely weighed out burger, which is about 1.6 ounces. That lovely lettuce, the tomato, the onion, the sauce. It's all the correct ratio, which joined together, all the components make a brilliant burger. Anyway, I digress. So there's our mix. Nothing more, nothing less. 500 grams of meat, 10 of salt, five of pepper. So with our mix then, that very natural mix of just the meat, the salt and the pepper, and if you stick to that ratio, which was two grams of salt to every 100 grams of meat, one gram of pepper to every 100 grams of meat, you will have a perfect tasting burger and you will actually taste the meat. Now I've made venison burgers in the past, I've put bacon in them, onions in them, herbs, spices, mustard, horseradish, but what I wanted to do was just keep it really, really natural. And I've just fried a bit off in the pan and tried it, and they are absolutely perfect. Now again, no binding agents, no breadcrumbs, no egg, just pure venison meat. I haven't added any pork fat to make it juicier. What I'm gonna do is to make nice thinnish patties, fry them quick and then serve it on a beautiful brioche bun with some lettuce, 
some tomato, some onion and some mayo. And I think that will be a fantastic burger. Now, like I said, no binder, no filler. These stick together really, really well. As you can see, I'm just shaping them in my hand now. Not too thick either. I want them to cover my bun. There's nothing worse than a burger which is smaller than your bun and you have to eat all that bread to get to your meat. So roughly shaping these patties then. I shall give them another shape before I put them in. I shall most probably get a bowl of water. It's always easier to shape them if you've got wet hands. But for now, a preliminary shape. Just like that, it's that easy. I mean, you could put them on the block, press them down, shape them that way. But I always find in the hand, flattening them down, rounding them off. And there you have our four burgers ready to try. Right, let's get the pan on. Let's give it a go. Just shake that one up a bit better. So I've got some oil in my pan then. I'll take one of these burgers, as you can see there. Nice width, just give it one more shape. Some print in the middle, and then just gently get it in the pan. So while that is ticking over, I just wanna get my other ingredients prepared. So some nice thin slices of beef tomato. Beautiful, some finished slices of onion, some baby gem lettuce, which I absolutely love. I'm just going to take the main core out, just have the lovely leaves. Nothing wrong with the core, nothing wrong of it at all. So we got our lettuce. Now my favorite accompaniment for things like this is with a good mayonnaise made with free range eggs into a bowl, a little bit of harissa paste, give that a mix up, it's that easy, it's got that little bit of spice, beautiful, just water that down a minute, and a little bit more mayo, So good that is. Some pickles, just turn this over. It's looking lovely. Just gonna tidy up that end. And then slice. We can get our gherkin on. When the time comes, all the components, I think looking pretty cool. So onto my lovely burger then. Some cheese, some decent cheese, not that plastic crap nuclear orange whatever it is they can't even call it cheese so we get that on just going to cover that over to help start melting the cheese the heat will rebound off send it back down and then i want to rest the burger and we'll get our beautiful brioche bun lightly a toasted just take my burger off the heat then now because that is proper cheddar cheese it's not going to melt like that thin rubbish. Right, I'm gonna rest that, tent it lightly, just get some heat in the pan just to lightly brown off my brioche buns. Okay then, let's build this. Some of that lovely harissa mayo on the bottom. Really do give this a try. It's not too spicy. You know, you can judge it with the mayo. I'm just gonna put some of this lovely fresh little gem lettuce down on there and I'm going to put my onion on there just like that and that wonderful natural venison burger I'm going to put my tomato on there as well and of course got to be pickles And then just 
just a little bit lovely toasted on the top and there we have my venison burger and there she is how's she looking to you guys and girls out there I suppose the proof is in the pudding can you see that it's absolutely mm. wonderful that's all that's left I do apologize it's that good well my dear friends that was absolutely fantastic and the beauty of that burger is that venison meat or if you're using beef 100% pure meat no added fat no binders no fillers no herbs or spices just salt and pepper so really natural and then you can obviously go to town on building your burger but again kept it quite natural simple with a burger lettuce tomato onion pickles and that lovely mayo with harissa but put together as one awesome absolutely awesome do give it a try simple as well thanks for watching another episode of the scott reed project and if you've liked what you've seen here today please click subscribe on there that button there my ugly mug what a handsome chap and uh, find me on my social media facebook scott reed the scott reed project and also on twitter at the scott reed project so until next time take care and get your grill on you know it makes sense <laughs>